once you've got the leading doing it from both sides the next thing that I start to work on is and um, that was beautiful working on some isolations so isolations are basically just um, isolating body parts to help build your horse's body awareness so that they can uh, move just one part of their body. So the first thing that we start to, oh, we're good. Can I find a scratchy spot? So I do include lots of like downtime in my sessions, kind of break um, break up the big session into these little mini sessions, but we'll include lots of, of uh, movement and then cuddles and little grazing breaks and just lots of different bits and pieces so that the time together is really calm, but um, really positive and fun as well. So when we're talking, but teaching isolations, it comes down to this clarity again. So I want a really clear way to say to my horse what it is that I want them to do because horses generally they don't do what we want because they're anxious or they're confused, they're scared, um, they're overexcited, all of these emotions that we don't want. So when you've got like relaxed clarity and they're enthusiastic but not over threshold, it's quite easy to good to really work with them because you've got they're working with you as a partnership so um, when we're looking for isolations we begin with lateral flexions good which is literally just bending the head from one side to the other and as you can see a really easy way to begin to do that is by using the target so I can just hold the target into position and Rowan will bend her head and hold her nose to add it um, in the right position and then from there you can really start to change so I can say can you come low good really nice as well as high you can ask for different amounts of flexion and what um, I like about this is yes it's stretching so it's kind of like carrot stretches but a bit softer they're not just like swinging around for the carrot but also because I can just look for her to soften there good then you can start to get a little bit of duration and so they're starting to get this idea of like just moving into this position and just softening and relaxing into it rather than just swinging around and that's going to be really important if you're wanting to change the level of bend but also to make sure that you don't um overface your horse physically as well should we try the other side oh you've got a horse flying there they're horrid aren't they you come on this side you touch and then we can stretch it down you touch Nice, good girl, really good. So you'll start to see whether your horse has, can do it um, more easily on one side than the other as you are progressing. That was lovely, that was lovely. Good girl, Rowan used to be very, very um, stiff to the right. So she was bent to the left and she would really struggle to bend to the right. She'd often just step onto me with that right shoulder instead. That was lovely, good job. So when we're looking at this training, it's like, how can we make it clear for the horse? How how can we make it rewarding and how can we really get these positive emotions so looking at relaxation and um, interest it's got to be interesting for the horse that they're problem solving that they're an active participant in working it out um, and I don't want to be working with horses who would rather be somewhere else so you can't they kind of just keep increasing the pressure until they, they do it but they're like oh well all right then I want to be working with a horse who's like yeah okay I get this I really want to try um, and that the two of you are really working as a partner and that comes down to creating a situation full of positive emotions and when your horse feels relaxed and interested and successful and enjoys working with you first of all it improves your bond but also it makes it really easy to train things too all right so some of the other isolations that we teach are quarters over so I'll just show you that one oh good girl so you can use a target again or a rope I will show you show you some of this with different equipment um, and the way to do it oh I know those flies are horrid aren't they is to use the, tar the target to bring around in a small circle and that naturally encourages your horse to step over with the quarters and then you can use your marker to say yes that's it really nice and again come around in a small circle and you can click as they step under then you can start to fade the target out <laughs> really nice gorgeous so that you can just say can you move over and you just get the isolations of the quarters now obviously Rowan knows these I don't normally reward her this much for these basic behaviors but I just want to show you some of the steps that lead to how we've got to where we've got to so one of the principles is that you want to create the behavior make it something really clear and obvious for the horse and then you can use your marker to pinpoint the exact little pieces one of the other elements so you can use we've got a backup as well and you can use a target to help get the back up down um, and one of the other isolations that we do is the shoulders over so to get that do you want the horse to they need to rock the weight onto the hind leg so it's really helpful to begin with getting your back 
And then use the target again over here. Good. And you can see, oh, have you got a horse fly under there? See if I can get it for you. Oh, not good. Oh. They're nasty, aren't they? Um, so you can use the target again to really clarify that you want your horse to step the, the shoulders across. I'll show that again with her here. Oh. So just think back. <laughs> no, not that one. Think back. And then target across. Nice. Hopefully you can see the big step there. I'll try and get it again here. Look up. Sorry about the flies, although they're not as bad as they have been. They've been awful the past few days. <laughs> you done, Ro? So you can start to see like how helpful the target is because it's something that the horse is moving towards rather than away from. So it's really easy to say, there, good, to say, this is where I want you to go. And once you've explained it to the horse, then again, just like we did with the quarters over, you can start to fade it out. So you can just, um, you walk on a couple of steps. Oh, good. Again, can you think back and then cross? Nice. So you can see there that she didn't then need the, the target, that it's just my body position, the hand on the shoulder, and that builds into all of these different elements. So as always, we're in. Oh, you want to do the poles? <laughs> we will do that in a bit. Come back. Um, as always, that um, we're creating it and then explaining which bit we want. Now those build together really nicely. So for example, let's say we want to teach the horse to bend. Again, you can use the target to come around. So this is a, a brings into the flexion. But if they fall onto you with the shoulders, you can support, nice. You can support with that hand. So you've taught them the cue that when you put your hand on the shoulder, it means they're to move the shoulders out. And you've taught them the cue that if you ask here, they can bend a little to the inside. So if I then combine them, yes, good. Then he should get a horse that can bend really nicely. Good job. Really, really nice. That was fantastic. I'll show you on the other side. So a really nice exercise you can do is to go, can we go straight? And then can we bend? You can see my body changes, cues change, good. Yes, gorgeous. And then can we go straight again? Straighten up my body. Oh, beautiful, so nice, so nice. So the whole principle is really about breaking everything down into these clear little pieces so that you've got, come this way, you've got something um, really obvious to be able to explain to your horse. I'll show you that coming again down this side. You walk on. Oh, we're not doing that one. Good girl. So we go straight and then we bend around softly. And you can mark your horse, yes, there. You wanna use your marker to pinpoint those moments when your horse gives you the right thing. So, um, so there, for example, on the bend, I say like you want to feel them like creating space around you, like a banana. So if they're rushing or tense, you just wait, you breathe softly. There, and as she bends around, I feel that the shoulder's not coming on top of me anymore. This is so obvious <laughs> when you're feeling like, oh, they're just falling closer and closer and closer versus when they, you have your hand there and they just curve around. Good girl. Good. And then we change, walk, and good. Walk straight. Oh. Then we can come back. You see she has a head up there, touch. Good, we've been working on the back up because she does have a tendency to throw her head up and contract a little, so using the target. So then you can just start to mix everything up. Thanks for watching. If you found that helpful and think that this might be a way that you'd like to train your horse, then please check out the Connection Training Club, which is our online membership site where you can access all of our videos on how to train it. We've got a whole course on gymnastic groundwork, which really breaks down everything, looking at the theory, understanding movement, straightness, symmetry. So looking at really what you're training and why. And then um, it there are videos taking you right through every single exercise, starting with leading, building up, teaching all of the things you've seen in this video, all of the isolations, beginning bending, um, things like that. And then right up to more advanced exercises as well. 
We've also got home study courses on everything from getting started with positive reinforcement and handling healthcare, despooking, loading, riding, all sorts of different bits. You can get support through the forum where where we've got wonderful members from all over the world who are really supportive and friendly. You can get um, support from us as well. We run study groups, Q&As where you can ask your questions, join in the challenges, get video reviews, all sorts of of um, support is available and you'll become part of a really friendly, open-minded, um, supportive group of people as well. So if you want to find out more about that, then head over to our website, connectiontraining.com. You can find out more about myself and Rachel, our approach, and more about the CT Club and sign up there too. Um, you can also find out more in our best-selling book, just head over to Amazon and search for Connection Training and it'll pop up and that gives you a lot of information on our um, principles and um, as well as the training from a practical perspective as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.